I spent $7,000 at Collecticon without leaving my booth. Time to do, 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 do. What's up, guys? We are back with another Collecticon video, which we are doing a lot of Collecticon content because while I was gone, I was like, you know what? We might as well get some content here because there's a lot of creators I want to open with. There's a lot of different people I'm meeting. So it turned out pretty well in terms of uh, all the different things we got to record. Yes, I did almost spend $7,000 at Collecticon. I'm going to tell you what my profit margin for the trip was at the end of the video. Did I make money? Or did I lose money on the trip? But before we hop into the rest of the video, we have a giveaway. I'll be giving away this mismatched God card set, which, uh, yeah, we have two of the 25th anniversary. I didn't have the Slifer, so I was like, you know what? We'll do this MVP Slifer just to kind of fill in. Just like the video, be subscribed, turn notifications, and let me know down below, were my Collecticon purchases worth it? All right, so in this video, we're going through, I think, everything I bought at Collecticon, besides some stuff that ended up getting flipped because I'd buy something and just put it in my case, and sometimes people would come by and buy it, or I'd sell it to a friend. I'll try to mention those as well as we go through everything that I bought. So we'll start off with something that's not Yu-Gi-Oh! related. This was actually the very first thing I bought. So basically Collecticon is Saturday and a Sunday event. So I got there on Saturday. We could have set up on Friday, but I didn't get there in time because I was playing uh, basketball at Rusty's house with vintage Yu-Gi-Oh! and some other people. You'll probably see some of that in the vlog if you haven't already. You know, little highlights, you know, little, little moves, me getting swatted, you know, some good stuff. So I missed that part of the setup. So I had to get there a little bit early on Saturday to make sure I had time to throw stuff in my cases, actually get my cases over to my tables because I was one of the last ones there I think I got one of the worst spots at our table I was pointing away from everybody you had to like kind of walk around our whole booth to find me some people would walk around they'd be like oh Ruxin you're here I didn't even know I didn't see you so yeah that was my fault didn't show up uh, early enough to get a good spot but basically how Collecticon works is at nine o'clock the uh, VIPs can start walking through so I really only had like 25 minutes because I got there at 8 35 I had to run get my cases I had to come back you know throw them down get out all my stuff out of our our uh, giant tubs that I brought I mean the absolute worst part about Collecticon was carrying those in and out like it was a super long walk I was like man I want to I want to take a quick look around so I said I didn't leave my booth I did leave my booth for like half a second I just looked over and I saw they had poke Pokemon games at the next booth so I kind of walked over and it was also because this other guy that knew me was like hey come over here we got some stuff they had a complete inbox Pokemon Pearl version which I believe is a 2007 release so when I was young I played Gen 2 and Gen 3 originally and then once they hit the Nintendo DS games my parents were like you're not getting a Nintendo DS we're not buying that for you and I was like are you serious so I never got to play these uh, or at least I didn't own them I did get to play them from a friend and stuff a little bit so these were nostalgic in the fact that I never like I, I wanted to get them and I couldn't really get them for myself so this was really cool to grab this I want to eventually get a, a complete inbox copy of everything this was only 79 dollars which i think is about market price but the fact that this game from over 15 years ago 17 years at this point is only 79 dollars and you, if you buy like a new ps5 game or whatever like 70 dollars so you pay like nine extra dollars to get this 2007 complete inbox pokemon pearl i mean just look at this thing it's amazing it has the manual it has the game it looks i mean it is not completely perfect like if you look there's a little bit of a something going on there but i mean overall the game looks almost brand new the thing is a lot of these can be counterfeited i'm really bad telling but I, I mean this seems real to me but if i'm wrong for some reason tell me you can tell me i got scammed in the comments but either way it's a very cool looking game i'm very excited to add it to my pokemon collection so after that tiny escapade i just went back to my booth i was chilling the whole time i was trying to sell stuff i did sell a decent amount of stuff i think we sold over five thousand dollars worth which is pretty decent but as i told you guys earlier i spent seven thousand dollars technically i spent six thousand seven hundred dollars so six thousand was spent at collecticon on items that I'm either reselling, buying for collection, or opening in future videos like the vlog, or maybe past videos, depends on when you see this. The vlog, we did a special The Duelist Genesis opening with Lewis Vintage Yu-Gi-Oh! So some of that went toward that and got burned when I opened it up, and you'll see what I pull to see if I got anything back. And then $800 went toward my trip expenses, which I, I did have like a long trip for various reasons. I was at the beach, as you guys saw, so I kind of went in a big loop and stuff. So I ended up staying in extra hotels, and I bet $80 Wi-Fi at Collecticon. Yeah, I need to get into the other stuff, but $80 Wi-Fi, that really happened. So let's go through some other stuff I got. So the reason I had to buy $80 Wi-Fi is because there were so many people in there that the, the signal on your phone just wouldn't work. So people would be like, hey, you got, uh, I want to buy something. I've got Cash App. I've got Venmo. I've got PayPal. And I'm like, well, it won't load. And it wouldn't load for them. So we're just like sitting there. Chelsea was like, I'll go find the Wi-Fi. She went and found it. And they were like, yeah, you got to buy it. $80 a day per phone. So it's not like you could buy Wi-Fi and share it with people. It was like just me on my phone for 24 hours. Insane. 
I still bought it and uh, honestly it was probably worth it because I was able to like look up cards I was able to actually use my apps it was so bad so here's some like current actually this one uh this one I didn't actually buy that's the one you guys saw from the uh Magia video but I put it in the stack I did buy these um, I didn't buy, I, I bought everything at 70%. That was kind of my offer, uh, for it being there, which was beating most booth out there. I think everybody was doing 65%. I did 70. And then I think a couple people from my booth may have even done 80, which is like a crazy, crazy good deal. Because if you sell on TCG or eBay, you're getting 85% like yourself. So like you have a 5% margin. So it's really small, especially with shipping, not including stuff. So that's why 70 is still a really great offer. Cause I have 15% to work with minus shipping and everything. And I did that cause I do usually do 65% if you guys like send me a collection because there's no shipping involved when you're a live event it's like you hand it right to me so it's like i'll give you an extra five percent for that so uh i end up buying these for those i'll probably list these on tcg player immediately some of the stuff will go on ruxon 34com so if you do want to buy some of this stuff and you, maybe the high-end stuff like Caius will probably be on there. Uh, Ruxa34.com, go check it out. There's also a bunch of other stuff I'm listing. Like I am selling my other PSA 9 Blue Eyes right now. My wavy one, where is it? I'm selling this sucker because I did reacquire this one from Ian who pulled it on whatnot. Uh, so he sold it back to me, which was pretty exciting. So I now own that one. I don't need the wavy one because I didn't pull that one. So very cool. So if you want to buy stuff like that, here's some other stuff that I picked up. This was like a $1,200 lot I bought from somebody. He had a bunch of collector rares here. Uh, so a bunch of cool stuff here. He had a bunch of Starlight rares. Like this is a legit Starlight, not a 25th anniversary. Blackluster Soldier, Soldier of Chaos. That's a Secret Pharaoh rare from Magnificent Mavens. Abilinitus, that's a Starlight rare. Evenly matched. So here's some 25th anniversary rarity stuff. Another Starlight, Lulu Wallalith, Dark the Dark Charmer. Here's my 25th Pot of Prosperity, Forbidden Droplet. So there's a bunch of like really nice cards. Lubellion, $200 card. Uh, so there's a bunch of crazy stuff that I bought in that lot. I think that was it. I might have sold a couple cards. I can't remember. So those are the singles I bought. There's also some graded and some sealed. So we'll go to the graded cards next. Here is another card I bought, a Blue Eyes Tune PSA 9. I figured like it's Blue Eyes Tune. It's a great card to have. These are like pretty you know sellable you know if you buy blue eyes tune you buy blue eyes you know that stuff usually does pretty well and stuff like whatnot so i was like i'll pick this up it also came with a stardust dragon collector rare first edition tune chaos psa 10 which lewis ended up trading me for uh the video we did with duelist genesis so you'll see that either already have seen that or see that in a couple days but i ended up trading a stardust for stardust packs to try to pull a stardust you'll see if i did or not blue eyes tune dragon psa 9 that was part of that then i picked up a guardian seal this was in a four card lot i think this is the cheapest card. It's only like a $100, $85 card, something like that. Super cheap for a PSA 10 from original uh, Dark Crisis. So pretty crazy. Also uh, traded for a magic cylinder. So the thing was, you think when you're a vendor at, at an event, I figured I'd mention this in video, that you're, you know, I, you're like, how do you spend so much money if you were just in your booth the whole time? You think that all you're doing is selling, but n like half the time, it's just people coming up and saying, I'm trying to sell this. What can you offer me? And like some people are like looking for crazy amounts. Like I had one guy come up with a DRO for Cyber Dragon that was in mod play condition worth 60 something dollars. I offered him like 40 something, which was 70%. I think it was like 64. I offered 40, whatever. I don't know. 60, I don't remember what the numbers were, but I offered him 70 and he was like, I was looking for a hundred and I was like, well, the full price is 64 uh, for that condition. So, I mean, it's like, I can't do it. So it's like, it was kind of fun to like, you know, you see different things. It's kind of like vent, like with like vendor videos you see that sometimes and it was like i was like i guess i'm doing it now but that kind of guy would come up or there'd be somebody to be like i don't even want this anymore just like give me an offer and i give them a 70 percent off they're like wow that's way more than everybody else has offered me i'm like okay cool and then there would be other people that would come by like you'll see a big card i'll tell that story in a second let's just get through this magic cylinder lon first i traded this for zero the man that was in my binder i brought my binder just so uh ira vop claim sale could go through it and pick out what he wanted it turns out that was where most of my sales came from in terms of like numbers but people were like oh the binder and they'd go through and they pull out a 20 dollar 15 10 dollar card and they'd buy it versus slabs were not moving super quick so i was like next year i might just bring a ton of singles and that's like seems like pe what people are wanting this one i bought for collection horn of heaven and i didn't even buy this i traded this with rusty tca gaming he bought a dark crisis first dead box off me two uh legacy of darkness boxes and then he traded me this that he because he picked up two of these for 120 dollars so i don't have this psa 10 i shouted out josh in the vlog i don't know if it'll be in there or not but josh loves this card he always wants me to pull it in the metal raiders box breaks because it's so bad it's literally the worst the bugle terrible card very cheap not very desired but i don't have a psa 10 for my metal my metal raider set and it's my favorite set so honestly this should be the set i complete so i i bought it then speaking of that uh four card lot earlier with the dark uh the seal it had these three other cards. It had a Game of the Magnet where actually, this is how this worked. Rich uh, from Magic to Millions was at our booth. 
and he bought these cards and then uh he like just gave them to me and i paid him back or whatever so like they didn't come up to me but i ended up with the cards give me the magnet where this one's already sold on rux 34.com so that's sold but i'm showing it off uh widespread ruin also available on rux 34.com and then a dark sage which was my favorite of the four cards really beautiful from dawn of destiny xbox that's a sick card now this one is still available as well very cool and then our biggest i picked up a cgc 10 dark magician girl a guy came up and I honestly probably gave him too much money for this thing. Uh, this and a few other cards, I gave him a 70% offer. I honestly probably overvalued this thing because it's CGC. And CGC uh, does not usually do as good as PSA 10. I did bump it down from a PSA 10, obviously. And then I did 70% from there. But this card, I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see how well it does. But it's still a CGC 10. I think it's a former 9.5 is what he told me. So basically, remember when CGC changed everything for the fifth time? Uh, that you had a 9.5 and then you could make it a 10 so he did that so i'm this thing the centering i was like if you regrade this it's probably not getting a 10 if it had a 9.5 before it's hard to really let's let's take a better look this slab is kind of gross i need to clean this thing up what happened with this car was i went through his cards i gave him a price and he was like ah, i'm not sure you know he's like i don't know how good of an offer that is and then he left and he came back and he was like you were the best offer and i was like great all right cool so let's do it so then we did it let's see uh because i think he may oh that cleaned that up a lot that is beautiful so it okay let's do the front you guys know i don't love cgc specifically but i do love the slabs i will say that the slabs are amazing the company itself i'm not sure i'm not sure i feel about it a lot of changing up of everything people aren't as big of fans of it so it, it doesn't really sell as well it doesn't command like psa 10 does that there's another little thing there let's get that off so i'm not as sure if i love it or not but this card was really nice and i was like you know what it's a dmg i'm gonna pick it up there's still a little spot there i could probably get off but that looks a lot better so i ended up picking this up definitely the most expensive card we bought well i say definitely we actually picked up another dark magician girl you're not seeing here and the reason you're not seeing the other card is because as soon as i bought it i was next to vintage Yu Gi Oh, and i was like hey you need this card He's like, actually, yes, I need this card for my binder. Here's the card. I'll show you a clip from the vlog. I bought a Dark Magician Girl first at MFC. I bought a Dark Magician Girl MFC. All right, so now it's Lewis's. Congratulations. I ended up selling it to him, like, for like an extra 75 bucks so he, he just he paid me a little bit more still way under like the market price i think i bought it for like 525 because the surface was like a seven and then he bought it for me for like 600 so i made a little bit of money just a like, quick flip so that was kind of the big one there then finally we have our sealed products we have the rarity collection 25th anniversary i bought two of these boxes i have another one somewhere i just put it away real quick and i was like we don't need to show off both it's you know it's a newer set but anytime I can pick up Rarity, I'm just going to pick it up. It's especially Rarity one. So I have a couple more of these. I usually uh, don't sell these unless it's on whatnot. Sometimes I sell a couple. But yeah, we're going to not have those on Ruxin34.com probably. Then we have a couple more. Another trade that I did. So a trade I did with Kraken Packs, who was also at our booth. I picked up this Shining Victories first ad. This is it. This is kind of like an extra. I actually picked up an Ancient Sanctuary box from him that he's going to ship to me because he didn't have it with him. And I traded him one of my CRV retail boxes and he gave me this in as like an extra box first edition, which is pretty cool. I mean, it has the crystal wing on it. And then a Rivals of the Pharaoh box as well. So I was like, you know what? I'll take those boxes. That'll that'll be a decent trade. I'll end up with Ancient Sanctuary, which I need for my set because I am co uh, collecting all the first 14 boxes, uh, maybe even more once I complete those. I'm making a lot of progress on that, by the way. Once I complete that, there will be a video because that's going to be insane having the first 14 first dead hobby boxes and we have two more boxes today i know it's been a lot of chatter today but it's kind of i kind of wanted to talk to you guys about the event and stuff like that i made one purchase one more purchase where i picked up a first ed shining darkness booster box which is in very great shape by the way it has a little bit going on right there but honestly no it might just be made like that yeah those little flaps are like that okay so this this box is just in fantastic shape and it also was with an enemy of justice first edition box which by the way is the current box break up on rux at 34.com i was like we have not done enemy of justice in a very long time it is a hobby box so i was like yeah i'll pick that up we'll do a box break so go check that out if you haven't already if it hasn't sold out because i just posted it today but you guys probably won't see this for a couple of days because i'm trying to you know get caught up because i got ahead on videos i've been gone for a long time now i'm back trying to trying to get caught up so go check that out and we'll be streaming this by the way on youtube so YouTube box break, not whatnot. We will be doing a lot more whatnot recently. I will be doing a lot of whatnot streams soon as well. Probably light instruction soon if you haven't seen it yet because it all kind of depends because it's European. When I get the boxes, it's kind of a different schedule. But whenever that happens, that'll be on whatnot. It's going to be very cool. We're going to do some openings on YouTube as well. So overall, we spent a ton of money on this trip. Here's my profit margin that you guys have been waiting for. I sold 
if I didn't miss anything, $5,384 in cards, which is like, oh, that's a lot. That's a ton. That's a great, a lot of large amount of sales, right? But you guys know I spent $5,995.60 in buying when it comes to uh, purchases of stuff that you saw in this video, plus a few other things that you haven't seen in this video, but you'll see in other videos. Trip expenses of 800. That put my profit at minus $1,411.60. And that doesn't even include my like eating and stuff. I didn't include that. So there's an extra bit included there where I lost money. Fortunately, we did get multiple videos out of the trip. So that'll definitely help. And a lot of these things I bought, I will be able to, you know, put up for sale and stuff like that. So I think overall we're going to be okay, but our actual profit margin is literally in the red. So it was a great trip, but I should probably hold back on buying so much and maybe like, you know, actually sell some stuff next time. Let me know in the comments, did I make a huge mistake or did I pick up some good stuff that's going to make it worth it in the end? Shout out to Toe Info Show, Ernesto Deanna, America Deutscher, Brandon Chaney, Ian Musa, Junior Barding, Robert F. Chengalang, and Aldelsa Garcia Jr. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.